Good morning. It is 6.26 a.m. on Thursday, July 9th, 2020. I am a humanoid robot. Uh, I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So, I... <laughs> Feeling a little weird this morning. I was extra tired last night. I think possibly just from changing my routine this week back to going into the office and sort of being on my feet all day as opposed to not being on my feet all day. That could be it. Uh, but in any event, here I am. So I was definitely feeling like tired, but... Uh, not otherwise like real symptoms, just kind of just low, low energy. So I got, I went to bed early-ish and, uh, you know, here I am still feeling a little teensy bit wonky. I don't think I'm actually coming down with anything. It's just like tired, I think. So uh, last night I read a bit more from that uh, RPG that I mentioned for Roll20, Burn Bright, B-R-Y-T-E. And it's got some really neat things in it. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, this is a, a tabletop role-playing game designed uh, f natively for Roll20. So, like, digital first, you know, built up from the beginning to be in Roll20, which... You know, having read through it, I, I don't know that there's really anything about it that has to be that way. I mean, it, you know, like it's, like it works on Roll20, but I, I don't think that, like, you, you don't have to have Roll20 to play it other than the fact that you would have to read the book on their site. Um, but the, uh, the game has some neat stuff in it. I like the dice system uh i i feel like i would you know i would need to sort of experience it and play to see how i feel about it because it's pretty different in a lot of ways one of the things that's key to how dice are you know used in say dungeons and dragons uh or you know even for that matter like fate or cipher or whatever is that you're rolling you know, uh, it, you'll, you'll be going along until something happens um, where you want to do something and the outcome is in doubt. And so generally speaking, you are rolling dice and hoping that the numbers of them, um, you know, there are, you know, enough sixes or uh, that the number on the D20 is high enough uh, that the DM says that that succeeds. Uh, or with fate, you know, like, oops, with fate, you roll these four dice that have pluses and minuses on them, and so you have enough pluses plus your modifier or whatever. Well, in this case, what you do is every skill that you have, you have a die size associated with it, like it's a d4 or a d6 or a d8 and so on. And if the complexity of the task <clears throat> is a 2, then you roll two of that die. So like if you have a, a D6 for a skill and you're trying to make you know a, a complexity two check, then you roll two D6. And the thing is, it doesn't matter how high or low the numbers are, all that matters are doubles. So if you roll two D6, and it's a one and a three, you succeed. If it's a five and a six, you succeed. Six and a three, you succeed. One and a two, you succeed. Three and a three, six and a six, one and a one, those fail. Um, and so the way that essentially, you know, uh, a higher complexity check works is you add more dice, so more possibilities. So, for example, if it's a five difficulty check, you're rolling five d6, the odds that 
any two of them might be the same number. Because if you get a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4, that fails. Rocket is being weird at me. Uh, so, but one of the, uh, the uh, other interesting elements about how that works is that the game is explicit that you don't limit yourself to using um, skills for specific things. Like, for example, um, you know, that like one of the examples they give is that it's like, uh-oh, guards are coming, better hide, make a stealth check, is how it might work in Dungeons and Dragons. But, and, and, uh, but with Burn Bright, they say, but what you should say instead is, uh-oh, guards are coming. What are you going to do? Excuse me. It is a complexity three skill check, but you, you can choose any, any of your skills that you want. If you can justify how you use that skill to resolve the situation. So you do have a stealth skill. You could use that to just hide, or you could say, well, I use my presence skill to intimidate them into going away, or I use my engineering skill to um, uh, know just where in the uh, machine there's a panel that I can open and, and uh, hide in, or I use my athletics skill to, you know, hang, you know, do one of those things where I, I, I'm up on the ceiling pressed against the walls, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, as long as the difficulty is, you know, as you, you're able to use that skill. Now, the question that anyone might ask about that then is like, why wouldn't you just try to use your best skills all the time? Well, they've got another mechanic for that too, where these things called Nova points that let you do really powerful things, but you only get those when you have used one of all of the different sizes of skill. So if you have a skill that you only have a D4 in, and a D6, and a D8, and a D10, and a D12, so you, you have all of those, right? And you get a Nova point when you have used, you know, at least once all of those skills and then you get a nova point and so it encourages you in order to get those points to occasionally try to do things with the things that you know, the skills you're not as good at which is an interesting idea we'll just have to kind of see how that uh plays in in um at the table anyway um i've got to go ahead and get ready for work so i'm going to leave it there but i will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes